everything was fine until you got some terrible news. The inhabitants of the city are infected with an incurable virus that turns people into zombies. You don't believe me? Check out the news. The streets are flooded with crowds of the walking dead, and they have already begun to hunt for the survivors. Ah! We're all going to die. What can we do? What should I do? My plans for this weekend did not include becoming a zombie, but panic is not helpful in the case of a zombie apocalypse. Here are the key rules of survival in case bloodthirsty zombies try to break into your house. To begin with, block the windows so you don't attract too much attention to yourself. Barricade the door and the windows with furniture. But it's too late! A crowd of hungry zombies is already at the windows. They are following you slowly, but they won't stop. They are already going up the stairs. Good thing we have an alarm that will alert you to the approach of danger. They won't be able to get into the house quietly. For this idea, you will need tin cans and a rope. Lift the ring and pass the rope through it. Tie a knot. Secure the next can at a short distance. Tie the knot, passing the last can through the loop. Hang the rest of the cans on the rope the same way. Take some old screws, bolts, or other metal objects. Place them in the cans. If you touch the can with your foot, it'll make a racket. The zombie alert system is ready. The bloodthirsty zombies keep going, but this time they will face a more serious obstacle. This railing will delay them, and you will have time to hide. Collect long sticks. Sharpen the end of a branch with a knife to get a sharp tip. Do the same with the other sticks. Take plastic cable ties. Set the sticks crosswise. Tighten them with ties. Now you need a thicker stick. Place the end of the stick in the place where the branches are crossed. Assemble a piece like this. For reliability, connect the elements with ties. In a narrow passage, the sharp sticks will halt the zombies and help you gain some time. For the next rescue idea, you will need some oatmeal, an apple, and a banana. Cut the banana into pieces. Put them in a plate with oatmeal flakes. Stir and mash the banana with a fork. Add a grated apple. Add a few seeds and raisins. Mix everything thoroughly. Place the mix on food foil. Smooth it with a knife. Cut it into small squares. Put it into the oven. Bake for 15 to 20 minutes. Take a bite. Mmm, tasty. And most importantly, useful and nutritious. Put the treats in a Ziploc bag. Emergency cookies in case of a zombie apocalypse are ready. And now we will tell you how to assemble a last chance kit and get the right food in case of a zombie attack. Be sure to add water to your backpack, your vitamin cereal cookies. Don't forget walkie-talkies to communicate with other survivors. Add some canned meat, soap, hygiene is important, wet wipes, flashlights, electricity will be in short supply, crackers, matches, a power bank, super glue, a first aid kit, instant noodles, and a lighter. Your emergency backpack is ready. These stocks will get you through several days without help. Your home is no longer your castle, and you need to act very carefully, because a bloodthirsty zombie can attack you at every turn. It's got my hand! We'll tell you how to protect yourself from zombie bites if you only have empty plastic containers and old magazines to work with. Use the magazines to protect your hands. Wrap it around your forearm. Secure it with wide tape. Protect your other hand with the magazine, too. The first rule of the zombie apocalypse is not to get bitten. Your arms are protected. Now it's time for your leg. Take a big plastic bottle. Mark the places of cuts. Cut the bottom and the neck of the bottle with a box cutter. Cut the bottle lengthwise. Make holes on the edges using a hole punch. Insert laces. The easiest way is to lace up the protection right on your foot. Tie the laces like a normal sneaker. The plastic boot does not interfere with walking and tightly wraps around the foot. Now you are ready to meet a whole squad of zombies. And if you cannot handle the zombie invasion alone, a friend will come to help you. She sneaks up from behind and catches the monster with a huge net. Just detach the zombie from its victim and that's it. Your friend is saved. To make this net, you will need a fishing net and two plastic pipes. Cut off one section of the cage with scissors. Use plastic ties for securing the handles. Wrap the pipes with adhesive tape so that you can hold the net with one hand. The zombie is disarmed for a while. 
and instead of a regular shotgun from the movies, use a stick with sharp teeth for defense. You will need a baseball bat. Bend a fork like this. Fasten it to the bat. Next, you need a rope. Turn the bat around and wind the rope around it. Your new weapon of mass zombie destruction is ready. I wonder which one will dare to attack me first. When panic turns into despair, you are ready to scream. Shh, don't make noise. Loud sounds will attract a crowd of zombies. But how can we communicate with each other then? You need to come up with some special gestures for signals and make up a short phrase book. You can use international sign language or invent a dictionary of gestures understandable only to you two. The main thing is to learn how to communicate as silently as possible. In a fight with zombies, don't forget that they can also crawl. And while you are fighting with those who move on their feet, more zombies are attacking from below. Good thing you thought everything out in advance and protected your feet from bites. You will need a pair of rubber boots. Next, get nails and other metal parts from around the house. Hot glue them to the surface of the boots. Make sharp thorns, sticking the nails with the heads down. These boots with metal spikes are too tough even for the hungriest zombies. You can stop worrying about your legs and fight back the zombie that's about to grab you by the throat. A zombie bite really changes people. Just a moment ago, we were best friends. And your friend comes just in time and gets the zombie's attention. Oh no! A zombie immediately gets her by her throat! But we also took care of this scenario in advance. Take a piece of cloth and several bottle caps. Drill four holes along the edges. Next, you are going to need a thin wire. Fasten the caps with wire. Connect them to get two solid metal dies. Fasten Velcro to the edges of the fabric. Use hot glue. Glue the caps. This chainmail can be a real lifesaver when you meet a zombie. For the next rescue idea, you need cupcakes. Remove the paper and crumple the cupcakes in a deep plate. Add condensed milk. Stir. Form an oval from two halves. Then take some white fondant. Make a long roll out of it. Decorate the cake shape with fondant. Spread the roll like this. Do the same with the second half. Take raspberry jam. Paint the cells in red. A zombie's favorite tree is ready. Cover it with a glass dome so that the smell of sweet fresh brains does not attract the attention of zombies ahead of time. And now you need a bra with a double buckle. Unfasten the front. Fasten half the bra like this. Attach the strap, so the second end of the strap manually. Do the same with the second half of the bra. Put the masks aside and make a zombie trap. You need a piece of rope. Lay the ropes on the floor. Lay the ropes crosswise on top. Tie ropes with knots to make a huge net. Done! Sneak into a room that the zombies haven't reached yet. Put the zombie treats on the table. To protect against infection and the smell of rot, use a mask made out of a bra. Remove the glass cap. Quickly run away. Now this room is about to be full of the dead. The smell of sweet brains acts on zombies as a powerful magnet. Wait for all the zombies to gather in one place and cover them with a mesh trap. And while they try to get out of the rope web, eliminate them with accurate shots. Great job! Our world has a chance of survival, but the zombie apocalypse is not over. The epidemic continues, and crowds of zombies walk the streets in search of fresh brains. A map will help you get out of the city. In order to not turn the light on and attract attention, use special glasses with flashlights. Maybe you should move to another continent. If you could only know for sure in which country there are more survivors than zombies. To make a light-up accessory, you need glasses and two pocket flashlights. Glue elastic into a ring. Put it on the glasses. Fasten the flashlights. Done! If the battery to the flashlight runs out, you can use a portable candle with a built-in ignition. You will need a metal box and candles. Take out the wick. Hot glue the wicks to the box. Melt the candle in the microwave. Pour melted wax into the box. To arrange the lid, take a small sheet. Fasten the paper pocket using hot glue. Insert matches. Cut off the igniting part from the matchbox. Glue it to the lid. 
With this magic box, you will be able to light a candle even if there are no matches or lighter in your pocket. After all, everything you need to make a fire is already inside the box. Food supplies are running out. We will not last long. We'll have to leave our house. The girls climb into the attic, where they kept the large emergency survival kit and prepare to leave their dwelling. So, let's see what we have here. A saw, sleeves with nails, a rope, oh, and a glove with claws. At least this is something. After putting all the most necessary items in their backpacks, they hurry to the exit. But be careful, zombies are somewhere nearby. Making your way through the ruins of the city, the most important thing is to not run into the walking dead. They have just flooded the half-destroyed city. Girls need to go through the building, but the risk is too big. There's a whole crowd of them here. Let's look for workarounds. Maybe use the navigator. Oh, yes, funny joke. The phone died three days ago. They will have to check the map. It seems the path is found. Everything is clean here. Let's go. This narrow path leads them straight to the building. And now we'll tell you how to make a sword belt, which you must have noticed on one of our brave little girls. First, you need a wide belt with a ring and a spring hook at the ends. Attach the belt around the waist. Take a piece of belt tape. Place it diagonally on your body. Hem the tape manually. Do the same with the second tape. You should get such braces. Sew another tape, creating loops on it. Cling a metal spring hook. Put a piece of tape tightly around your leg. Insert the tape in a half ring hanging from the belt, an ideal place for weapons. The shoulder strap will accommodate a large amount of necessary equipment, and this accessory looks very stylish. You look just like Laura Croft. Finally, the girls got to an abandoned building. But you need to act very carefully. For example, do not step on empty cans. A loud sound, like a bell, attracts all the zombies in the neighborhood. Hide quickly! Girls make their way to the far rooms of the building, to which the zombies have not yet reached. It is necessary to change the shoes. It's good that they took care of this in advance and took noiseless insoles. Go over the sole of your shoes on the cardboard and cut them out. Take soft washcloths. Attach them to the cardboard using a hot glue gun. Cut off the excess. Make a slipper for the second leg. Then take a wide elastic band. Glue the edges of the band to the sole with the hot glue gun. Fasten a soft insole made from Fomoran. In such soft foam slippers, you can not only run away from the zombies, but also slip past a hedgehog unnoticed. But the silent walk strategy collapses when the girls realize that they have stumbled upon a room with too many zombies. Oh my god! And where are they coming from? They just cannot cope with such a number. And why are you all gathered here? Did you smell some fresh brains? They need to look for workarounds, and at the same time, think about weapons. Check what they got. A hammer? Not bad. And I have gloves of the Wolverine model. Such claws can destroy more than one zombie. Take a small piece of glass, lubricate it with cream, draw such an oval with the hot glue gun. Take sharp metal spokes. Use the hot glue gun to attach them to the base from the hot glue. Use the hot glue gun again to fasten the spokes to the gloves. Done! But your arms can be protected with sleeves with nails. Take wooden blocks and long nails. Mark the location of the nails, placing them in a checkerwise pattern. Hammer them completely. Attach a wide black elastic band with the hot glue. Put it on your arm. That's all. The forearm area is under reliable protection. Armed and very dangerous. It seems that one of the zombies has broken from his pack. Well, now we can handle it. They pounce on the dead man and cope with him right away. Look, it seems that all its entrails fell out. The girls decide to disguise themselves so they can hide in a crowd of zombies. The stench of the zombies' intestines will mask the human smell and they will be able to pass unnoticed through a room teeming with the walking dead. Unfortunately, the girls did not find another way out of the building. Ugh, these zombies are so nasty, both on the inside and on the outside. To confuse them, you will need a rubber glove and cotton wool. Fill the glove with cotton wool. Insert a wire as a holder. Give the glove the color of the zombie skin using acrylic paints. 
Draw spots of decay using the eyeshadow. Fasten a sleeve from an old shirt. Smear the sleeve with red paint. Use red slimes as the entrails of the zombie. Stretch the slime so it looks like guts. And now the friends carefully make their way between the wandering dead. Guys, we're all zombies here, and there is no need to look at me like that. Oh, I finally can see the exit. Having fun chatting with each other, the girls head to the forest. Perhaps they should have turned back because the zombies are following them. Suddenly, a girl jumps out from behind a tree, and this survivor is very unfriendly. It turns out that at first, she took the friends for zombies. Well, once they figured it out, they decided to go together. It's less scary when there are three of you. After a long hike through the forest, the girls arrange a halt. I am so thirsty. Oops, it seems no one has any water left. Tired, they search for the nearest spring on the map and head there. Although, perhaps this is for the best. After all, the zombies chasing them do not stop for a minute. They do not manage to go far. Suddenly, the zombies jump out of the forest thicket and start attacking them. Oh my god! Run for your lives! To mislead the zombies, the friends light smoke bombs. They definitely haven't seen such a smoke show before. Like blind kittens, they wander inside the smoke and don't understand where their victims are hiding. The girls share their impressions and check the damage. Oh no! It seems that the newbie is wounded, although it may not be a zombie bite at all, and it will pass. The friends treat the wound and put a bandage on the arm to avoid infection. The water is near. Hold on! Well, finally, the long-awaited spring. Wait! You cannot drink water from an unverified source. First, it must be filtered. Cut the bottom from a plastic bottle. Insert the filter in the neck. Collect water in the inverted bottle. The filter lets the water out literally drop by drop. So instead of the palm, it is better to immediately put the bottle there. To make such a filter, you need a disposable syringe. Take out the plastic piston. Take some pills of activated carbon. Cut off the tip from the syringe and cut off the excess parts so that only the cylinder remains. Seal the uneven edge with insulating tape. Grind the activated carbon to get powder. Cut out circles from cotton pads. With the help of the piston, push them deep into the cylinder. Pour the activated carbon powder. Cover with cotton pads on top. Close the cap. Having collected enough pure water, give the bottle to the wounded friend. Maybe fresh cold water will refresh her a little and give at least a little energy to move on. She looks really bad. Get up, baby. You have to cope. The girls struggle to get to an abandoned beach. There it is, straight ahead of them, and that's their escape. They just need to make a breakthrough and try to swim across it. But their new acquaintance looks very bad. She even loses consciousness from everything she has experienced. Wake up! What's wrong with you? There is no time to delay, and the friends make an unexpected decision. To transport the wounded girl to that shore, they need to build a raft. And the beach littered with plastic is now just right for them. The girls collect plastic bottles. They attach six pieces together with a wide scotch tape. Then they gather the blocks together. They bind the bottles with a rope. That's when their friend wakes up. Just in time! We need to get going. But what is wrong with her? It seems that the bite was deadly and the new girl turned into a walking dead. Stop! Don't come any closer! It's us! Don't you remember? The decision is hard, but the girls have to get rid of the newly minted zombie friend. At the sound of a shot from a coastal forest belt, a whole crowd of zombies comes running. It becomes too dangerous here. They urgently need to run into the water and swim. Faster! They are already close. The girls grab the raft and rush to the strait. How nice it is that zombies are afraid to wet their dead legs. This time, the girls manage to escape. But what is waiting for them on the other side? Now that they've crossed the bay, the girls finally see land. Let's anchor and come ashore. I'm so glad we can finally walk on land again. The girls are walking down an unfamiliar road. Where should they go? They're tired and hungry, and they don't have their backpacks. They feel like strangers in this new place. Suddenly, 
they see a rock with a sign. Survivors this way, yay! I think we're safe. The girls walk carefully on their bare feet through the forest. Ooh, there are red arrows on the trees. We must be going in the right direction. Look, there's a camp. There are definitely survivors here. Hurry up. The girls approach the camp. Hello, is anyone here? The camp is empty, but some things are hanging on a rope. Dry clothes are just what you need after a long voyage at sea. Whoa, the sneakers are my size. Suddenly, one girl hears a strange noise. It looks like the camp isn't deserted. But these aren't people at all. The tents are shaking really hard. Someone is trying to get out. It's a zombie. We have to get out of here. We don't even have anything to protect ourselves with. The girls notice a rope and some kind of weapon. They grab the gear and run for their lives. But the zombies aren't far behind. The girls unwind the rope and run towards the undead. They run in a circle to wind the rope around the zombie pair. Let's tie them to the tree. And the weapons they found in the camp will help calm them down a little. This magic wand will finally defeat these angry zombies. Take a stick and a chain with a ball. Attach long nails to the chain with a rope. Increase the number of nails to make a dangerous hedgehog. Nail the chain to one of the ends of the club. Use a rock instead of a hammer. Now that they've dealt with the zombies, the girls find a lake. Finally, we can wash our faces and relax after all our adventures. One problem, the girls are really hungry. Actually, maybe there are fish in the lake. I just made a fishing rod. You will need a long stick and hairpins. Bend the edge with pliers. Bend the hairpin and attach it using a wire. Attach a few more pins underneath. Fasten the fishing line and wind it around the stick. Cut off the leg of a pin. Make a hook out of it. Sharpen a rock. Fasten an acorn you found along the way instead of a bobber. Use a metal nut as a fishing weight. Tie the hook to the fishing line. Find a worm for bait. Let's bait the hook and throw the bait. Let's catch some fish. Somehow, we didn't catch any fish. Our idea didn't work. But no, look, a bite. The acorn is completely underwater. What are you waiting for? Reel it in. Look at this fish. We caught it. We can eat. The girls put the fish on a stick. What a good catch. Now, we need to find a place to cook. Next, they come across a dilapidated factory. What a scary place. Maybe they can find something useful here. Just as long as they don't run into any more zombies. Ooh, it's so creepy in here. While they wander through the ruins, the girls find some old cans and sheets of linoleum. This is exactly what we needed. After the abandoned factory, the girls go to the forest. Ah, here is a great place to rest. Great, now we can deal with our equipment and cooking. First, take two thick sticks. Sharpen the ends with a knife. The tip needs to be very sharp. Make small grooves in the center for a tighter joint. Fold the sticks crosswise. Tie them with a rope. Make several wooden ninja stars. Cut a pentagon out of linoleum. Mark holes on the edges and poke through them. Fasten pieces of leather like this. Lace the protection on your arm. Put the throwing stars in the leather belt. Ninja versus the walking dead? Who do you think will win? While one friend sharpens a throwing star, the second is cooking dinner. Take two cans. 
Go over the bottom of a small can with a marker. Cut it along the outline with a knife. Also, cut out the bottom of the small jar. Connect the cans like this. Lay some dry wood in the can. Light the fire. Burn, baby, burn! Sharpen a long stick. Put the clean fish on it. Mmm, fish kebabs! Not bad! Aw, oh, man! We have to eat it without any sides! Whoa! No way! Look what I found in Survivor's Camp! A whole can of corn! But how can we crack it without a can opener? Well, that's easy! We can just use a rock! Pick a rock with a pretty rough surface. Rub the rock on the lid of the can. Grab the edge of the lid and bend it upwards. Wow! I missed corn so much! And the fish is ready! Grilled fish with corn on the side. What could be better? And when you're done with the corn, heat water for tea in the can. Pierce the can with a metal bar and put the can over the fire. Done! I love sitting around the fire and chatting with my friend. But zombies never take the day off. Look out! It's behind you! Zombies are attacking one of the girls. Good thing I managed to protect my arms. Linoleum sleeves are obviously too tough for it. My friend comes to the rescue and bites off the zombie. She throws a ninja star and pins the zombie to the tree trunk. The girls hide in the bushes. Let's get out of here! There's still a whole bunch of zombies in this forest. But suddenly, one of them stumbles and falls. Hang on, where's my friend? She probably ran the other way. Right now, I just have to break away from the zombies. Then I will figure out how to find her. Maybe if I launch a kite, she'll see it and understand where to go. For this idea, take an old umbrella and a knife. Cut part of it out. Secure the metal parts with wire. Pull a piece of fabric over one metal leg and sew it. Fasten a piece of belt material. Attach pieces of thread crosswise like this. Launch the kite into the sky. But it didn't work! My friend still isn't here! Our girl is getting desperate! How did she manage to lose her only friend? And she's very tired. But it's too dangerous to sleep in the woods. The whole place is teeming with zombies. If only she could climb a little higher. But I can't sleep like on a branch like a panther. Oh, a quilt. Someone must have left it after a picnic. And we'll also need a special rescue belt. Take a long parachute cord. Tie a knot at the end. Tighten the rope with loops to weave a chain out of the cord. Also, secure the second end of the cord with a knot. Connect the loops with a metal carabiner. Attach a few more hooks to the belt. In the case of extreme situations, a belt like this is a must-have. It's easy to remove and turn into a long rope in less than a minute. Fold the blanket in half. Tie knots in the corners. Throw the blanket over the branch. Tie it firmly with the rope. Now you can have a comfortable treehouse. Climb inside. This hammock is so comfortable, cozy, and most importantly, safe. Zombies will never be able to reach me or even guess that I'm in here. When our heroine wakes up in her hammock in the morning, she discovers a whole crowd of zombies. Stop! Don't panic! But how can I keep from panicking? Just don't fall! Just don't fall! Suddenly, one of the zombies pulls the hammock from the tree. Ah! It's all over! Don't eat me! I don't taste good! Jane dodges a zombie and tries to crawl away. But her back hits a rock. Is it really the end? But I hear a strange whistle. The zombies obviously didn't expect that, and they are frozen in shock. Who is this mysterious figure in a black cape? Meet the zombie buster. Apparently, he's not scared of these living dead at all. The zombie buster hides behind a tree, and the crowd of zombie rushes after him. But what is this? The zombies get tossed aside like toys. The stranger's power is incredible. Jane is scared half to death, and she has no idea what to do next. The zombie buster gives her a hand. It seems like he's not dangerous at all. Without a word, he takes her with him. Where are we going? It looks like he's taking me to his secret lair. All this reminds me of a thriller movie. They go down to the shelter. Wow! This is a real post-apocalyptic bunker.
Jane still doesn't know what is waiting for her behind the doors. This is where her friend, Lily, is hiding. She gave up hope to see Jane alive. Suddenly, alive and unharmed, her friend appears in the room. It's a miracle! How did you get here? Oh, it's a long story. By the way, this is the guy who saved me. Wow, he saved me too. But tell me, where did you go? While I was running from a zombie, I fell and hit my head. Then this brave young man found me. At first, he didn't know if I'd even make it out alive. But he still tried to save me. He says I lost a lot of blood. If he hadn't helped me, I would probably never see you again. Can you imagine? My head still hurts. But in general, I'm fine. I woke up in the bunker already. And when the zombie buster brought me water, I told him I lost my friend. We got to know each other, and it turned out he's a great guy. So I gave him your picture and asked him to go look for you. And you know the rest of the story. It's time to talk about how we can keep living, how to get more supplies, where to find water, and how not to run into zombies. Phew! There are more questions than answers! The girls are studying a map of the area so they can navigate. What is this sound? An alarm? Stay here! I'll take a look! The zombie buster runs out and looks through his binoculars. The zombie alert system worked! The blood trail led the zombies to the shelter. In order to know about the approach of the dead in time, the zombie buster tied a rope on the path to the shelter. He sharpens a stick with a sharp blade of a knife. To make a knife, take a lid from a metal can and a stick. Bend the lid in half. Break off one of the edges. Insert it into the slot in the stick. Make a hole and attach the blade to the handle with a wire. Sharpen the edge of the stone. The knife is ready. The zombie buster drives a peg into the ground and ties the end of the rope to it. He attaches a flare to the stick. Tie the fuse to the rope. Well, now the zombies won't get through unnoticed. The zombies touch the rope with their feet and there's a loud explosion. Everything is covered in clouds of blue smoke. The girls are so stressed. What do you think happened? The zombie buster returns with a strange box. Zombies are coming. It's time to dress up. Zombie fashion is my profession. What is this? Khaki? I love military style. Compliment your look with an anti-zombie choker. Take a strip of rubber and screws. Attach screws over the entire surface. Make holes at the edges and tie pieces of rope at the ends. With this choker, you can stop worrying about zombie teeth. Small brass knuckles will help in the fight against zombies too. Take three nuts and a reinforced thread. Connect the nuts together and put the device on your fingers. Zombies are in trouble now. The zombie buster protects himself with a special shoulder pad. To make it, take a piece of rubber. Cut out a piece like this. Punch holes along the edges. Attach a smaller part, securing everything with screws. Use a belt strap with plastic snaps for fastening. Well, we have to have a short fashion show? We're ready! Watch out, zombies! Come on, girls! Show us what you got! Rocky Balboa training? Of course! The girls work on their fighting techniques using a punching bag and a dummy. The zombie buster helps them learn how to punch. Take that! Ha! Ha! What do you think of this high kick? They run out of their hiding place to the trap. What should we do? They decide that Lily will be the bait and lead the zombies into a trap. The rest will wait for her in an ambush. For the trap, you will need a rope and a camouflage net. Choose a good place for the trap. Tie double knots at the corners of the net. Spread the net on the ground. Wind a rope onto the knots. Tie the ropes in the center to get a parachute. Throw the end of the rope on a tree branch. 
They didn't have to wait for long. Zombies are already chasing Lily. So, they got two, but the third one is still out there. The zombie buster will finish him using his bow. <laughs> what an accurate hit! <laughs> To make a bow, take a piece of plastic pipe, a nail, and a rope. Tie a loop at the end of the rope, insert it into the pipe, and pierce it with a nail. Bend the end of the nail. Do the same on the other side, pulling the rope. The bow is ready! Now take thin branches, nails, and plastic cable ties. Bend the tie into a ring and fasten the nail to the edge of the branch with it. Add a few more ties for security. Cut off the ends. Done! And let's make a quiver from a Pringles container, a belt, and a rope. Wind the edge of the tape around the Pringles jar and keep winding the rope. Connect carabiners and a quiver for your arrows is ready! Well, a whole crowd of zombies is here! And we can't handle them! Let's return to the shelter and wait until they pass by. The traces of Lily's blood lured all these zombies. An enormous swarm of zombies is coming to the shelter, but the net won't let them through so easily. It seems like we are safe. But what's this? The Zomboss appears on the horizon. He's a super strong mutant! He pushes the zombies apart and breaks the metal grid. The zombies rush straight into the shelter. How can our heroes be saved now? In search of fresh brains, the zombies rush through the corridors. They are getting close! Run for your lives! The gang builds barricades from whatever they can find. But the hungry zombies demolish everything in their path. Maybe at least this railing will help them escape. But that doesn't hold the zombies back for long. They keep pressing until the grid opens and the zombies are breaking through. I'm panicking! What can we do? Is this really the end? There's only one way out. They will have to leave via a radioactive hallway. Too risky! But this is the last measure. The girls protect their faces with masks made out of bottles. To make them, take a large plastic bottle. Cut off part of the side. Unscrew the cap and pierce the holes in it with an awl. The result is a breathable sieve. Take a small piece of cloth, moisten it with water, and put it into the cap. Close the bottle. Fasten an elastic band to the cut. Cover the edges with tape. Your face shield is ready! The girls are about to jump into the dangerous corridor when they suddenly hear something they never wanted to hear. The zombie buster is staying! No, come with us! But the only chance to keep the girls safe is to hold the zombies back all by himself. Otherwise, no one will survive. The zombie buster defends himself against the first attack of the zombies. But there are too many of them. He can't deal with them alone. The zombies bring him to the ground. He did everything he could. And the girls managed to get out. Today, they were saved but the price they paid for salvation was too high. Whatever happened back there, they need to leave quickly. The cost of their lives, the brave zombie buster gave the girls a chance to save themselves, and they managed to get out of the bunker. What'll happen next? Who knows? Only one thing is clear. Their strength is running out. They don't have any food, and this forest is so dangerous. Brr! It's so cold here! Maybe they should build a shelter to stay in overnight. The girls gather some branches. Good thing there are so many building materials in this forest. They put a huge stick on a tree. Make sides. Put sticks on both sides of the slope as close to each other as possible. Cover the top with small branches with leaves. This'll hide them from the zombies for now. The hut is ready. Hurry up! Hide in here! Wow! It's so cozy! 
It's a shame we don't have any heating. The sun goes down and it just gets colder and colder. Brrr. Oh, my favorite pajamas. How I miss you. Maybe a candle made out of some of these supplies will help us warm up. We need some empty soda cans. Cut a square hole in one of the cans. Cut the top part off of the other can. Put a stand inside the can. Now, roll up a piece of natural fabric. Wrap it in a piece of tin. Get some vegetable oil. Pour some of it into the can. Now, put the stand back and put a wick in the hole. Light the candle. Finally! Soon the can will heat up and we can warm our frozen hands. We also have a light source, which is always a bonus in the dark forest. Now that we have warmed up a little, we can fall asleep in our new temporary home. But evil never rests. A zombie smelled the survivors, and it's already on its way! Quiet! Quiet! Our cover's been blown! Oh my god! He's about to destroy our hut! We need to run for our lives! Now! They scramble out of the hut and try to hide in the woods. But the zombies follow them tirelessly. It's about to catch us. There's no other way out. We have to defend ourselves. We'll need weapons. It's a good thing James has a special zombie shooter. You'll need a wide tube and an elastic band. Attach the rubber band to the pipe with a zip tie. Tighten to make sure the elastic band doesn't slip out. Sharpen some chopsticks. Now put a dart in the tube and pull it with the elastic band. Release it quickly. There it goes. Ready, aim, fire. Reload. <laughs> The target has been destroyed! After several accurate shots, the walking dead isn't walking any longer. Quick! Let's run before a whole crowd of zombies figures out what we have done! The girls escape the forest onto a wide road. Oh look! Buildings! We must be close to a city! Let's see! What is there? They roam the deserted streets, but the city seems to have died out. Wait! Why did I say seems to have? The girls sit on a bench. Listen! It's so quiet at the playground! I'll never get used to the idea that there are so few survivors left. Oh wait! What's that? It looks like a remote control! And here comes a toy car! How weird that the batteries are still working! Maybe we should take it with us! I think it might serve us well. Even when you are sneaking through an empty alley, never forget that there might be a whole horde of hungry zombies around the corner. So they don't run into trouble, the girls use a selfie stick. Take a mirror out of an old makeup compact and get a regular selfie stick. Put the mirror into the phone holder on the selfie stick. Adjust it so you can see better. Just stay safe. To see who's hiding around a corner, take out the selfie stick and look in the mirror. Now you can walk around the city and no one will notice you. All right, we're good. Let's keep going. The girls make it to a grocery store. Yay! I hope there is some food left here. The girls are starving, but they have to stay safe. They look in the mirror first. Oh no, there's a whole group of zombies in there. Is this a zombie school reunion? They are all over the place! But getting food is very important! We have to get inside! To distract the zombies, the girls come up with a sneaky trick. They'll need an RC car and a few cans. Tie a rope to the top of the can. Connect the ropes and tie them to the car. Make the car move with the remote control so it runs away. The rattling cans make the zombies go crazy. A whole crowd of zombies runs out of the store and chases the noises. The girls are so happy they succeeded and they go inside. Whoa! Look at all this stuff! What should we take first? This should last us for a long time. Oh, here comes the cashier! And this is the perfect cashier for selling food during a zombie apocalypse. It's a zombie cashier! Let's run away! Cardboard boxes are extremely useful. That's enough boxes for now. Tape the cardboard pieces together. Put the box back in its original shape. Glue the walls. Get inside and make great camouflage suits. Make holes for eyes so you can see where you are going. What a great idea! It's hard to walk through a whole group of zombies. 
The girls managed to get through in short sprints. Zombies only notice moving things, so they stop and pretend to be regular boxes. Phew, I think we made it. There aren't any zombies around, so the girls take off their cardboard outfits. While they hide, they try to charge their phone. What can they use to charge it? There hasn't been any electricity for days. You'll need four AA batteries and a charging cable. Remove the insulation with a utility knife. Separate the wires and cut off the excess. Connect the batteries with isolating tape. Connect the plus and minus of the middle batteries with wire. Put wire on the plus and minus of the outer batteries. Put the cable in the phone socket. Look, the phone is on. It worked. There's no internet, but maybe we can catch a radio wave. Maybe we can find survivors. We did it! We did it! There's a survivor camp nearby. We just have to find the shortest way to get there. Let's follow the signal. The girls can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and now they have hope. But suddenly, their signal fails. There's interference and noise. Turn off the phone, quick. Panic never helps anyone, but we are too scared to stay strong. The zombies follow the noise and get to the girls. How did they find us so quickly? The zombie throws herself at Lily and tries to eat her arm. Good thing Lily is experienced and knows how to stay safe. Her arm is in a special anti-zombie sleeve. Wrap the forearm and hand with saran wrap. Make a few layers. Be sure to protect the fingers. Wrap it with wide tape. Cut it and get an unusual glove. Take some rope. Make holes in the edges using a nail. Lace it through. Done! is fighting the zombies, Jane decides to join in. She has a crossbow. How could she forget? You need a few sticks of different sizes. Put one of the sticks on the side. Install the second one at an angle. Hammer in some nails to keep them secure. Then take a rubber band and a clothespin. Hammer nails along the edges. Attach a rubber band to each one. Take a small piece of fabric. Attach a rubber band on each side. Nail a wooden clothespin to the crossbow handle. Tighten the elastic band and pin it in the center. Load a rock into the crossbow. Squeeze the clothespin and the rock flies away. Ah! Once they have hit the zombies a couple times, Jane grabs her friend and they run away. But that won't be easy. They are being chased by a whole crowd of zombies. It's like every zombie in the city came to join the fight. They are flooding the streets and chasing the girls. There are too many of them. We gotta run, but there's nowhere to run. The girls run to a parked car, but it's locked. They check another one and it's open. The girls hide in the car and zombies surround it on all sides. They're so scary. There's no key. We're going to die here. We can't get out and the zombies are about to break the windows. We are stuck. It's a trap. I'm so scared. But what is that? We are not alone here. Another car comes to their rescue and knocks down a bunch of the zombies. Strike! There is no time to think. The girls jump into the car and leave the zombies behind. Goodbye, zombies. No need to walk us out. Now that they are safe, the girls look around. Thank goodness they didn't get eaten by zombies. But what's next for them? What's on this survivor's mind? The driver's name is Walter. He's not very friendly, and the girls are a little uncomfortable. Where is he taking us? Walter sees an abandoned car by the side of the road and slows down. The friends are nervous. Nothing personal. I just need to get some gas. Walter gets a canister and a hose, then walks to the car. This is a tried and true method. Open the gas tank and insert the hose. Suck in the air with your mouth so that the gas goes into the tube. Then pour the gas into the canister. The girls are anxious, even though they are in the car. There are so many zombies around here. He's not being very subtle. 
Oh, wow! Here come some zombies out of nowhere, running at Walter. Sure, we expected that, but instead of fighting back, Walter gets scared and the zombie easily knocks him down. It's strange that he can't deal with one zombie, even though he's so mature. He clearly lacks experience in fighting zombies. He can't win alone for sure. We have to help him. Hurry, let's run. Lily and Jane use a fire life hack to chase the zombies away. But be careful, it can only be repeated in a zombie apocalypse. It is very dangerous. The girls need cotton wool and a chain. Make a ball out of cotton wool. Wrap a thread around it. Fasten one more layer of cotton wool on top. Now take a flexible wire. Wrap the ball with wire. Next, take the chain and a carabiner. Fasten the ball with a chain using the carabiner. And we have a lighter fuel canister right here too. Wet the cotton ball with gasoline. Set it on fire. So, zombies, are you ready for the craziest fire show of your life? The girls control the fireball easily and drive the zombie away from Walter. He is totally shocked. The girls have to drag him into the car. Floor it, Walter. Phew. Now the zombies can't catch us. Walter brings the girls to a very strange place. We're here, get out. He calls it a safe haven. However, it looks kinda dangerous to the girls. An abandoned building with broken doors, windows without glass. But there is nowhere else to go. They go through weird dark hallways. It's kind of creepy here. The paint is cracked. There are spider webs everywhere. It's like an evil wizard lives here. Walter brings them to the room, but he doesn't sit. He goes away for a while. The girls are only getting more and more nervous. Why did he leave them here? And where did he even go? Do you think we can trust him? The girls are very uncomfortable. There was no reason to fear since Walter returns almost right away. And he's bringing two cans of food with him. Oh, food! We are so glad to see you. Everyone's mood is better now that they are eating. And now they all trust each other more. Walter asks the girls to do him a favor. Anything, you saved our lives. Uh, it may seem weird, but I need you to bring a zombie here. It has to be, uh, alive. The girls are a little surprised. A zombie? Why? It turns out that he wants to use zombies for security. And if you think about it, it might actually work. The girls agree. After all, they owe him so much. Okay, well, bye for now. The girls have looked everywhere for a zombie. Where are all the zombies when we actually need them? As if he heard their call, a huge zombie shows up. The girls didn't expect that and fall back. Oh, what are we doing? Time to use the weapon Walter gave us. To make this weapon, you will need a large rock and a rope. Fold two pieces of rope in half and tie them together. Make a strong knot. Tie a knot at each end of the rope. Join the ends of the rope with knots. You should get a grid. Put the stone in it. Secure it with a piece of rope. Tie the grid with the heavy stone to a long rope. Strengthen the rope by making an ordinary three-row braid. Cut the extra rope so that they don't get tangled. Throw the weapon! A direct hit knocks the zombie off his feet and he falls to the ground. All that's left is to bring this oversized zombie to the camp. But he's too heavy! Oh, sorry, but we can't bring you with us. Let's keep looking. The girls look behind one of the fences. Wow, what a nice view. A zombie family is warming in the sun. Let's choose a zombie to catch. 
Maybe this one. Neither big nor small, the perfect size. What can I do to get his attention? I'm sorry, the store was out of brains, but do you like this bloody steak? No, what do you mean no? Why not? Okay, but you cannot say no to a well done steak. Mmm, delicious. Yeah! And now let's use a secret special tool for luring zombies. All right, it's a regular fishing rod. Place the bait. Here, zombie, zombie, zombie. How are you supposed to lure them? Zombie, zombie, come here, little one. The zombie leaves its group and follows Jane. Meat. And now it's time for a trap. You will need a plastic pipe and a rope. Pass the rope through the pipe. Pull it and knot it. Insert the second end of the rope and pull it through the pipe. This device that can not only catch a zombie, but also lead it at a safe distance. Lily throws the loop around the zombie. The bird is in the cage. The zombie catchers lead their prey to the shelter, and Walter is waiting for them at the doorstep. Finally, I will have my very own zombie. Walter seems pleased. Wow, those teeth. I should be careful with you. Well, that's okay. You and I are going to be friends. Walter takes the zombie into the winding hallways. The girls look at each other. Where is he going? And what does he have planned? I think something is wrong. Walter is really weird, don't you think? The girls run out onto the street. So let's hide and watch the building. I feel like it's a trap. They didn't have to wait long. Walter comes out of the building. Where is he going? To go to the car? Okay, now he's leaving. We can figure out where he's going later, but for now, let's explore the building. The girls walk along the corridors, even though they have no idea what they are looking for. Oh, one of the doorways is covered with plastic. Let's see what's inside. Oh, Jane, you won't believe it. I can't believe it myself. Oh my goodness, it's the zombie buster. How is this possible? Is he alive or not? Why didn't Walter tell us anything? Why would he hide him? We have more questions than answers. The girls rush to their friend. Maybe they can still help him. And then something terrible happens. <gasps> the girls wake up on a cold concrete floor. Their heads hurt. And their hands are covered in tape. Oh, there's the zombie in the corner of the cell. If it wasn't for the rope, it would have torn us apart. Looks like Walter tricked us. All this reminds me of a strange scientific experiment. And he must be a professor obsessed with zombies. One thing is clear, we are all in danger. Oof, I can't feel my hands at all. The first thing to do is to get rid of the tape. The girls decide to use a belt. After a lot of trouble, Lily manages to pull out the belt. Let me help. The girls use the metal buckle to break their ties. Ugh, finally. My hands are completely frozen. Now we have to decide what to do with this zombie. After all, we have no other weapons against Walter. Without thinking too much, the friends untie the zombie and lead it through the dark corridors. Where is this crazy sadist hiding? In his room of experiments, of course. The girls surprised the mad scientist and drove him out of the laboratory. Stop! We chased him to a dead end. Let's leave the zombie as a watchdog. We just need to tie the rope in the doorway. Don't worry, Walter. This cute creature will keep you safe. And it will keep normal people safe from a maniac like you. Besides, the girls don't have time for Walter right now. All they care about is how the zombie buster feels. Is he alive at all? Or did the doctor already turn him into a zombie? He still has a pulse and his hands are warm. It's a miracle, he managed to survive. But the zombie buster is still too weak to answer the girls' questions. He must be drugged. Regardless, we have to get out of here. This safe house almost became our last resting place in a bad way. The girls take their friend outside. There are whole crowds of zombies around in the area, which means we won't survive for long on foot. Okay, we need to take Walter's car. 
Jane and the Zombie Buster get in the back seat. Lily, drive! Hit the gas and get us out of this horrible place! Where are we going? It doesn't matter. Just get away from Walter and his zombie lab. How is the zombie buster? He should have woken up by now. Jane shakes her friend. He still feels very sick. His head hurts. He's nauseous. Stop the car. He needs some air. Fresh air should perk him up. The girls have a lot of questions. How did you survive? We thought you were gone. A whole crowd of zombies attacked you, right there, in the basement of our shelter. We saw it with our own eyes. You should have turned into a zombie, but you are still the same zombie buster we knew. The only idea the zombie buster has is that he might be immune to the zombie virus. He doesn't have another explanation. The main thing is that our brave trio is back together again. By the way, do we have water? I hope there are some supplies in the car. The girls go back to the car and look in the trunk. Oh, there is a whole arsenal here. Look how many useful things there are. A protective helmet, wow. Remove the headband from a construction helmet. Take self-tapping screws. Drill holes. Insert the screws from the inside of the helmet. Your new spiked helmet is ready. Now you need a flashlight and a wire. Fasten a piece of wire in the side holes and attach the flashlight to the helmet. This is the best zombie fighting helmet ever. But the most valuable thing in this trunk is a bottle of water. Once they drink their fill, they decide where to go. There is no need to choose. There is only one road. Well, let's move on. Oops, an obstacle on the road? This car blocked our way. We can't go further. What do we do? Well, we will have to push the car. Oh no, it's a zombie trap. Sorry, zombies, we don't have anything for you. We are fully armed. Put on bulletproof vests and protect your head with a spiky helmet, spiky shoulder pads, and an arm shield. Just try to attack me now. Take some sheets of styrofoam. Cut out the shape of a shield with a box cutter. Take wide elastic bands. Make cuts. Insert elastic bands. Take self-tapping screws. Insert the screws into the shield to make the letter Z. Attach an elastic band on each side. Attach self-tapping screws and elastic bands with Velcro to your kneecaps as well. Next, you will need a large board, a belt, and some nails. Nail two pieces of leather to the board. They are holding on nice and tight. Hammer the rest of the nails into the board. Coat the shield with spray paint. Done! I think these zombies are completely wild. Let's get this zombie land in order. Come on, friends. Show them what you can do. Get them, girls. You are definitely experienced enough to deal with them. The students have become the masters. What a hit. The zombie buster is so caught up watching the fight that he doesn't notice one of the zombies coming up to him. He gets closer to the zombie buster and is about to attack him. So why don't you react? The zombie looks at the fight and then back at the zombie buster. There's nothing to catch here. I'd better keep going. The zombie buster never noticed him. Of course, just look at Lily. With her new weapon, she knocks the zombies out like bugs. Take a rope and a heavy ball. Wrap the rope around the palm of your hand. Tie the rope in the middle. Place the ball inside. Tighten the rope. And attach a carabiner. One last hit and the zombie is defeated. Excellent work. 
Now we have to remove the obstacle from the road. The road is clear, we can move on. Look, there's a map in the glove box. Judging by the map, we'll run into a whole bunch of zombies on our way to safety. We need to strengthen our old car. Let's see how we can upgrade it. The girls go on a search for materials. Oh no, we are surrounded by zombies. Fight back if you can. How about a prickly frisbee? Take a plastic frisbee and a CD. Cut the CD into sharp pieces. Make incisions along the side of the frisbee. Insert the CD pieces. Now the zombies are definitely in trouble. And what do you have? A grate, some sticks, a net? Not bad for a start. Attach an aluminum bumper. Protect the windshield with metal mesh. Install the grate on the rear window. Glue sharp triangles to the hood. It looks like a powerful dinosaur. Attach spikes in the front and attach chains to the wheel covers. How do you like our upgrade? The car looks very scary. I wonder if it'll be as powerful as it looks. The fearless trio goes on the road. The road will be long and difficult, so the friends better be patient. And now we can check our anti-zombie car defenses. Come on, Lily, aim right at the center of the crowd. Let's strike this gang of zombies. Look out, our supercar did not let us down. The friends drive away in search of a quiet and safe life. However, something tells us that there are still plenty of adventures waiting for them. So, the friends managed to get away from the zombies and now they are searching for the survivor's camp. Oh, if it weren't for the car, who knows what would have happened to us? What's out there? Is there really some kind of camp? In the era of the zombie apocalypse, there are more questions than answers. What does the map say? I miss when we could just use a GPS. Oh gosh, what is all this smoke? Look, it's coming out from under the hood. Is something wrong with the engine? We need to evacuate. Well, looks like we are going to have to walk. Let's take the supplies and go. Goodbye, our dear car. You are a loyal and reliable friend. In search of a place to rest, the girls in the zombie buster walk through the woods. Look, there's some water. It would be nice to take a break. And here's the perfect place. Let's stay here. The friends make up a fire. In a couple of minutes, we can warm our frozen hands. Awesome! Now we have to resolve the security issue. We have some rope and an idea. Let's wrap the campsite with rope. Of course, it's not as good as electric barbed wire, but it'll do the trick to keep zombies away. Although, based on the map, there aren't really any zombies here. Easy as pie. And now it would be nice to have a snack. Canned food? Well, Zombie Buster, you sure know how to make hungry girls happy. You must have broken a lot of hearts in your past life. By the way, tell us, who are you before the zombie invasion? Well, certainly not a heartbreaker. It turns out that their friend the Zombie Buster was a family man. I had a wonderful family. I met my wife at school and we had just one son. Our pride and joy. I miss them so much. Aww. The girls are sorry for their friend's loss and changed the subject. They had very different lives. They were so carefree. They partied and had fun. By the way, do you like amusement parks? Jane and I used to spend all our money there, remember? My favorite attraction was the cars. The speed, the drive, the emotions. And cotton candy? Mmm, I think I still remember the taste. Ah, I would love to go back there even for a minute. After a little more conversation, they fell asleep near the fire.
But the zombie apocalypse is an unpredictable thing. And so their morning doesn't start with coffee, but with zombies stuck in the net of their rope fence. Let's go! It's getting dangerous here! Hurry up! The zombies are about to break through! What a terrible fog! Ugh! It feels like someone is watching us! Stop it! According to the map, it's not dangerous here at all! The road is across the city! But how can we get to it? We can't see anything at all! I think it's this way! I think I can see apartment buildings! We are on the right track! After a while, the friends see a small amusement park. Strange, there's electricity here, but how? What's the point of thinking about it? Let's go for a ride. When will we get a chance like this again? Look at the Ferris wheel. It looks like the one in Chernobyl to me. And that makes it even more attractive. We are not afraid of anything. The girls try to persuade the zombie buster to try the attractions, but he doesn't want to waste time. Besides, the sounds of us having fun can attract zombies. Who knows how many of them are around here? Zombie buster, please! We just talked about these parks, and suddenly we have an opportunity to have some fun? When will we get this chance again? Oh, please! Okay, fine. But who will turn them on for us? We can turn them on ourselves. Here's the control booth. Press the button and voila! Dibs on the red car! And I'll take the pink one. What difference does the color make? This is amazing! Run for your lives! Left, right! Do you even know how to drive? I should have said yes right away. It's so fun! Yay! Moving on to the arcade. Look at all these games! At least one advantage of the zombie apocalypse, all the games are ours! Night City Racing! It feels awesome! How about testing your accuracy? A basketball ring? There we go! Learn how to aim, maybe! There is also a skate rink here! And the skates in my size are available! Of course they are! Except for zombies, there is no one here to skate! Zombies on roller skates? Wouldn't it be funny? You can't just walk past the air hockey table! Zombie Buster, are you ready to lose? Lily is a real pro! Well, is it time to leave? Oh, Jane, did you turn on the Ferris wheel? We wouldn't miss out on a chance to see the abandoned city from a bird's eye view. Oops, I think we are not alone here. Where did these zombies come from? Look, there are two more of them. Come on, wheel, spin faster. We need to get down before the zombies get too close. Let's go! All the zombies in the area will run to the sounds of the amusement park. Faster! We can still get away! Oh no! One of the zombies grabbed Jane's leg! Oh no! The friends are already far away and didn't even notice her fall! She got left alone with the zombies! Ah, how scary! Fight! Jane! Don't let it bite you! Oh no! It happened! It hurts! Jane pushes the zombie off with her leg and runs away! The zombie buster and Lily broke away from the zombies. But where is Jane? Did the zombies catch her? The friends start looking for her. They can't believe that Jane couldn't escape. Where did she go? Jane wanders through the streets, blood streaming down her arm. What can she do? Where can she run to? Where can she find help? And how much time does she have left? She is running out of energy. But suddenly, she gets an idea. The car! I need to open the car! But how can I do it? A steel bar! It's just what I need! 
Jane is struggling to open the hood. Ugh, I did it. Now I need to find the alarm. It will take a couple of wires. She removes the insulation with her teeth. Jane knows that when the car beeps, her friends will hear and come to the rescue. But the zombies will also run to the sounds. There is nothing to lose. She's going for broke. She doesn't have long anyway. So connect the wires plus minus. Connect them to the battery terminals. Contact! A loud car alarm breaks the silence. Lily, Zombie Buster, where are you? I really need your help. But then a whole bunch of zombies come running to the sound. Oh! That's terrible! I think this is the end! But there's still a chance to get away. Jane's friends oh. heard the signal, too. Just in time! What took you so long? Lily helps get her injured friend out safely. And the zombie buster is going to take care of her opponents for now. A piece of rebar? Perfect! Sharp, precise hits make the zombies fall to the ground. Take that! Keep your rotten teeth away from us! Now run! Who knows how many more are around here? Probably a lot. A loud car alarm attracted zombies from all over the area. We are being chased. But Jane's too weak to move on her own. She is losing her strength with every step. The zombies are keeping up. They are about to catch us. Hurry up, guys. Hurry up. Watch out. There are more. Lily's fighting the attack. But zombies aren't easy to stop. The zombies are still following them. Unarmed with a wounded friend in their arms. The only way out is to try to escape from the zombies. But what's that? There's a grid in front of them. Is this a trap? We can't get out. Phew, look, the gate is open. Well, that's lucky. That's probably the best news we have had all day. The friends slip through the gate and close it at the last minute. Hurry up, let's go. The bars won't last long. But they can't walk fast. Jane is really weak. Poor thing. She can barely move. And it's snowing, too. It won't be long before they freeze to death. We need to find shelter. The friends find an abandoned construction site. No sign of zombie activity. Let's hope it's safe here. Meanwhile, the gray city is covered in snow. It looks so gloomy. We need to see what's wrong with Jane. Let's put her on the floor. Oh man, she got bitten! The zombie virus is already spreading through her system. Can't you fix it? Jane's condition is deteriorating in front of their eyes. She's begging to be left here. A few hours more, and our friend will turn into... Even thinking about it is scary! Putting her friends in danger is the last thing she would want. But Lily and the zombie buster can't do that to her. There's got to be something we can do! Looks like the zombie buster has an idea, since he managed to survive a zombie attack. And if their deadly bites didn't turn him into a zombie... What if he's immune? And if he does a blood transfusion... Maybe Jane has a chance. Lily really wants the immune cell theory to work. In the meantime, her friend is getting worse. She can't hear what's going on, and she's losing consciousness. Everything is floating. Oh no! Don't pass out! Open your eyes, Jane! Lily's shaking her friend so she doesn't turn into a zombie just yet. Lily's voice sounds like it's coming through a dense layer of cotton wool. Jane can't tell what she's saying. She can't think straight. She feels sick. It's all a blur. Jane seems to be waking up. Where are we going? What happened? She remembers something, but it's confusing. The friends introduce Jane to their blood transfusion plan. Because if the zombie buster can survive the zombie virus, then his blood cells should work. And I think they did it. The transformation process stopped. Uh, can you be more specific? I stayed with you and the zombie buster rushed off to find medicine and the right tools. Where can you find a first aid kit? Well, of course, in the first car you see.
There's a first aid kit. And some warm winter things. Well, that's lucky. He can go back to the girls. Without losing a minute, the friends plug in the system and start a direct transfusion. It's super risky. But they'd do anything to save their friend. We had to take that opportunity. The friends are still on their way. And there's a lot more snow in the woods. Brrr. These warm clothes came in handy. Jane got better, but not much. Her arm hurt so bad. Hang in there, Jane. You can handle this. Ah! Zombies are attacking! Come on, Lily. It's just a branch. Oh, it is. I'm really tense. But it's too early to relax. They are not alone in this forest. Lily Sharp Scream attracted a zombie who got lost in the woods. Brains. I can sense brains. Oh no, our friends got spotted. Look around already. Oh, look who's coming for us. The three of us can handle him. And we even have a little present for him. Snow gloves. For this idea, you are going to need garden gloves and plastic Christmas ornaments. Cut the bulb in half. Make two holes in each of the halves. Bend a piece of wire. Then use it to fasten the half sphere to the glove. Bend the pieces of the wire that are sticking out. Now you have a snow fight weapon. Pick up some snow with the bulbs and quickly form a snowball. All right, zombies, are you ready for a snow shower? We are going to show you who's boss. Aim right at his head. Nice throw. And the final snowball. Knockout. Well done. We even warmed up. The friends are moving on. They are climbing higher and higher up the mountain, and the blizzard keeps going. Oh, we are so high. Jane's still too weak for this kind of travel. She's dizzy, and she feels so strange. There is always so much snow in the mountain areas. They need to get to a hiding place. And what's that noise? What a surprise! There's a snowboarder stuck in a tree. Well, he has been a zombie for a long time. And next to the tree, here's his snowboard. Sorry, buddy. We are going to have to borrow your board. Well, don't be upset. We really need it. The girls found something just as strange. It's a piece of linoleum. And how could that be useful? Especially in the mountains. It looks like they have an idea. So, you ready to go down? The girls sit on the linoleum behind one another. Oh, that's it. They want to slide down on it like a sled. One snowboard for three isn't enough. Let's set up the equipment. Ready? Let's go! Woohoo! What a rush! For a second, you forget that there are zombies wandering around everywhere. The snow is in your face and the wind is in your ears. This is awesome! But the zombies won't let you forget about them for long. There's a whole pack of zombies here. But the girls leave them behind quickly. It's a good thing we don't have to fight them. Thanks to our extreme snow racing. The zombie buster boldly enters the snowy path of death. There's another zombie in the middle of the trap. How about a zombie hit? You can knock down a zombie with a snowboard if you go fast enough. It's all about keeping your balance. Done! Finally, we are out of the snow. Mountains have a very unique climate. It's much warmer and cozier here in the sun. Now let's decide where to set up a camp. In search of a place to sleep, the friends find shelter. It's enough to hide from the wind. Jane is freezing. Did her weak immune system get attacked by a cold? That would be terrible. That's okay. We are going to warm up now. The friends build a fire. The kindling starts to burn. Yeah, life is warmer when you've got a fire. Sitting by the fire is so much better than wandering through the cold woods. Jane, we are so glad that our blood plan worked and you are okay. I can't imagine what we'd do without you. The friends are sound asleep. 
But there's something wrong with Jane. Maybe it was just a nightmare. Scary zombies, a white dress. She can't remember. But where is she going? Why didn't she wake the others up? It's pretty dangerous to walk alone. This is weird. But let's go back to the campsite. The other friends wake up and can't find Jane. Where is she? Did she leave? The tracks lead that way. I think we might still be able to catch up with her. We'll just have to prepare our weapons first. Wind a thin elastic band on a forked stick in a thick layer. And Lily gets rubber gloves. If you put a few long nails in each one, you'll get brass knuckle gloves. Secure them with a piece of styrofoam. That's it! A slingshot and gloves with nails. If zombies attack, we'll be fine. Well, time to go find Jane. I have no idea why she left us. <laughs> Looks like we are not the only ones here. Look out for zombies! Wow, there are so many of them! Zombie Buster, shoot! And I'll take this one! Lily easily knocks down her undead opponent. Nice shot! Well done, Zombie Buster! Let's go! Hurry up! I saw a settlement on the map. Maybe that's where Jane went. It's not far. They've arrived. Quiet, someone's coming. Look! Some old lady? A zombie, maybe? No, she doesn't look like one. See, she's got groceries in her bag. Dead people don't need food. Still, she looks pretty weird. How could an old lady like that survive the apocalypse? Why don't we follow her? Let's run before she sees us. Hmm. I wonder where she's going. Oh, look! She's going through the gate! Should we keep following her? It's not that easy. Should we try to look over the fence? Come on, I'll lift you up and you look what's inside. I think we're clear. You can go. The friends get closer to the house and they look in the window. And what do they see? Jane sitting at the table with an old couple. A tea party, a nice chat, and their friend is wearing a weird dress. What happened to her head? The friends are shocked. We need to get Jane out of the house somehow. But how? Lily has a life hack, a pocket mirror. All we need to do is catch a little sunlight and get Jane's attention with the reflection. Mm. I think it worked. These are my friends. Hurry up, come in. I'd like you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Strange. Finally, the friends are back together. But it seems the hosts aren't very happy to have uninvited guests. However, first impressions can be deceptive. Old people like to grumble for no reason. Are you all right, Jane? Why is there a bandage on your head? Her friends have so many questions. But unfortunately, Jane can't remember what happened to her. Grandpa Strange saved me. Let him tell you how it happened. Well, have a seat, kiddos. Grandma Strange, pour the children some tea. They must be tired. So, here's what happened. We are old people. There's no one to help us, so we survive as best we can. There I was, as usual, collecting firewood. Then I see our Jane coming. I thought she was definitely a zombie. Then I looked at her. No, she's alive. And there is not a lot of living people in our neighborhood. Well, you know. Then I watch her slip and roll down the mountain. I think that's it, she's dead. I came closer and saw she was breathing. She just hit her head hard and passed out. So I treated her wound right then and there. And then I brought her home. I couldn't leave the poor girl in the woods, it's dangerous. That's the story, except Jane doesn't remember anything after the fall. But it's so great to see you again. What's with that dress? It was a gift from these good people. My clothes are all torn and dirty. The zombie buster has one question. How did you survive all this time? There's only two of you here, right? Well, we just did, son. 
consider us lucky, but the Zombie Buster has a map. According to it, the old people's house is in the zombie zone. And here is the safe zone. Isn't that around here somewhere? Maybe there are other survivors too. No, that's nonsense. It's just me and my dear old lady. There's nobody else around here. Don't even bother looking. That's a strange reaction. I guess old people are just weird. Go get your guests some clean clothes, Grandma. Wow, camo pants. Just like the ones the zombie buster had. They are so hospitable. Come on, enough talking. It's time to rest. Grandma Strange will show you to your rooms. These people are so friendly. We shouldn't have suspected them of anything. This house is great. What's in here? Whoa, a shower. Just like the old days. It feels so good to be clean. So, what's this? Hmm. Family photos? Who's that guy with them? It's weird that Mr. and Mrs. Strange never mentioned him. The old couple are taking Jane to her room. She's still so weak. Finally, a soft bed instead of hard rocks under her back. A good night's sleep will do her good. The Zombie Buster and Lily are settling in too. Sweet dreams! But what's that? Lily wakes up after hearing a strange noise. What could it be? She needs to check it out. Lily's going to see what's happening. It's quiet in the hallway. The other rooms are quiet too. It sounds like it's coming from underground. It is! There's a basement in the house. Lily goes downstairs, finds a door. What is that noise? It's locked. But the lock isn't an issue if you have a hair clip. Lily puts the pin into the lock's opening. Luckily, the door gives in easily. But what's behind it? This is a nightmare! They have a real zombie in the basement! Lily's in shock! Why are they doing this? Plus, the zombie looks just like the guy in those pictures. She needs to call the others now. Mr. Strange isn't going to let that happen. He shows up out of nowhere and covers her mouth with his hand. Lily still manages to scream. Oh, be quiet. Lily screams, wake up the zombie buster. But unfortunately, not for long. Granny Strange was on the lookout and a piece of chloroformed fabric puts the zombie buster into a deep sleep. Isn't Lily going to get any help? What are they planning? They want to feed the kids to their zombie son? Jane is their last hope. She also got woken up by her friend's scream. Poor thing, she fell out of bed in fright. Ouch, my head. Oh, what's that? I think she remembers what really happened to her. She woke up and heard weird noises. She went to see what it was. Mr. Strange was hiding in the bushes somewhere. She felt like someone was watching her and then he attacked. So I lost consciousness because he hit me, not because I fell. So I remember exactly what it was. But why would he do this? Why would they want me? What a nightmare! So they are not friendly, they are crazy. We are in danger, I need to warn my friends. What's that noise in the basement? Oh no, it's too late. They grabbed the zombie buster and Lily. Who is this zombie? What are you doing? Don't you dare talk to him like that. He's not a zombie, he's our son. Don't be scared, kiddo. He won't hurt you. He's our dear son. We raised him well. And you will be his bride. We've already got a dress for you. It's just your size. You are all crazy. You have no choice. Either you marry our son or your friends will die. It's up to you. But be honest with yourself. You know you don't have a choice. Jane's desperate. It's even worse than she thought. She's willing to make sacrifices to save her friends, even marry that monster, as long as they are still alive. Although, there's no guarantee that the old couple won't change their minds. Mr. Strange is preparing a celebratory barbecue. You bet he is. It's his only son's wedding. 
His wife brings the sausage. Mmm, smells great! Having a barbecue during a zombie apocalypse is pretty risky. After all, zombies might come to the smell of the meat. And here's the first one! They are lucky to have a high fence. The wedding feast is going strong. The groom and the bride are tied up. And the groom is also very dangerous. Jane hopes they won't have a wedding night. Everyone here is crazy! Grandma's feeding her zombie son sausages, but it looks like he's more into human meat. Meanwhile, zombies are coming from the whole neighborhood. The zombies climb over each other to get over the fence. Oh no! They are already here! Who comes to a wedding uninvited? The old people are trying to fight off the zombies. They are using whatever they can find. But there's too many zombies. Jane, come on! This is your chance! We need to free our friends! Lily, Zombie Buster, we're surrounded! The yard is full of zombies! We can't just get out! I think I have an idea! Let's run to the bedroom! If you protect your body with pillows, you might be able to get through! We can wrap our arms in a blanket! Alright, you ready? Then let's run before they break into the house! Hurry up, guys! The zombies are attacking! But the pillow armor is out of their league! The gate is open! Hurry up! Phew! Looks like we got away! Did you like our zombie wedding? Then comment below and tell us which one of our characters is your favorite! Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you don't miss a new episode about the zombie apocalypse